this afternoon to talk about his experience in going off the grid. So he's he's gone that next step from a um, energy efficiency perspective and moved into renewable energy generation. So please join me in welcoming Michael Mobbs. I noticed some repeat offenders. Um, welcome back and welcome to all of you. Can you hear me at the back okay? So um, it's part of life's journey being short really. Okay, we've got a short person height. I'm going to talk about how I went off grid for, grid for power. In March this year, I disconnected from the poles and wires. Imagine the child and me standing outside the house and the bloke in the cherry picker elevated himself to the poles and wires and snipped it and the wires fell down the street. I sort of jumped for joy. <laughs> it worked for a week. <laughs> and um, I really love talking about my tragedies and my mistakes and my lessons. I love being honest about this, so I want to talk about this honestly with you. I showered in the council's swimming pool showers. Meanwhile, the software in the system was upgraded and emailed to the installers and they brought a USB out and put it in and here I am well showered from my own house six months later. Of course I lost the energy uh, from the grid, it no longer came into my house and of course I lost the money. Four people have lived in my house for less than $300 a year for energy and water bills for 20 years. Everything in that house you can buy in Mwilumba. Everything. You can leave this room and order this stuff and have it on your job next week and for far less than I did. All of that cost $48,000 in 1996. The solar system then cost me $26,000 but today there's one being given out as a prize that you would pay $3,000 for. The batteries I put in, in March, cost me $21,000. I expect that by Christmas or early in the new year, it'll be about fifteen. dollars Already a, a new product has come on the market and it's about $9,000. An Australian company that launched about a month ago in Adelaide where the City Council gives a $5,000 subsidy for people putting batteries in with their solar systems. What a wonderful thing for that council to do. $5,000. Oh, I'm being recorded and um, there's a thing called Periscope which turns everybody into a TV station if they're just as silly as I am, but I'm, uh, I forgot to turn my phone off. Sorry Periscope people, there's this thing called Periscope enables you to use your phone as a little mini TV station. Hello Periscopers, we're at the Tweed Eco Fair and we're talking about going off grid and I've left my phone on as you can see. And thank you to the Tweed cameraman who's holding this. I'm not saying hello to you because uh, I can't see who you are, but it's a really empowering way for people such as me to share this. It goes up on the web for 24 hours, so people in Poland and Texas and whatever uh, can see it. And it <laughs> so you can turn turn it off on the side. There's a little thing at the side. Let me do that. It's so hard to get a good talker, good speaker. Yeah. Um, it's um, the um, what's it called? It's an indigenous company. Is it? Yeah. It's it's from Brisbane. Where where would I be without the wonderful Debbie Firestone, Tweed Tweed Council's magic woman? Thank you, Debbie. So the reason I did not put batteries in in 1996 was they were quite inefficient. They were lead-acid batteries. They were quite big. I've just got a tiny terrace. They would have taken up 
um, probably several dining room tables in volume, and they would have weighed one to two tonnes and crashed through the floor. This battery system, which has the inverter with it, weighs about 360 kilos, and they lifted it up onto the top of the balcony of the house. It's the size of a 600 litre fridge. And even I, who am not, not very useful about the house, can run it, it runs itself. And I can see what it's doing on my mobile phone. It's really very simple to use. I've, because I'm so unhandy about the house, I waited until something simple came on the market and I used that. It was um, made by a company called Alpha S A L P H hyphen E W -S, S. It's important that I make very clear what you need to go off the grid with electricity. You need the solar panels, which harvest the sun's energy. Then you need an inverter. It translates, so to speak, the energy from the sun to the energy that can go into a battery. And it manages the system. And then you need the batteries. And it's managed by the inverter and the software so that it knows how to meet the demands of the fridge or the uh, dishwasher or whatever is being turned on. So listen up, because I want to say something that's really important if you're choosing to go this way. I don't recommend this system if you're going off grid for this reason. It's good for me, but there is a more efficient system that I've since discovered. And it's made in Australia. It's called a sunny island. It's another thing. At the moment, if I turn um, the washing machine on during the day and the batteries are full, the inverter has turned off the panels, so I'm shedding or wasting or not harvesting energy because the batteries are full. What the sunny island does, it says, aha, I hear you. I hear you, the pump. You're calling for energy. I hear you, the washing machine. It bypasses the batteries and sends that extra unused power straight to the appliance, not through the batteries. It increases the life of the batteries. Big difference, I reckon, don't you? Yes. So, here I am, mistake-ridden, tragedy laden down in front of you. But you don't have to share that journey. You can choose another path. The Alpha is fantastic um, for people who want to stay on the grid. But if you want to do this system that uses the energy that's there in the middle of the day, that's when you do your wash. I've had to change my behaviour. I used to put the washing machine on first thing in the morning because that's when I was connected, it was cheap. So if I was using more energy, then it was cheaper energy. If I put the washing machine on in the afternoon, as the power price increased, sometimes by twice, then I wasn't making as much from my system. Now I have to change my habits. Now I have to do the washing in the middle of the day because I've got all this sun. So it's really interesting now. I can see the panels have been closed down to, say, two or three or five or nil watts, although it's shining. But when I put the washing machine on, the power surges up and so does the, the batteries fire up, uh, the panels fire up immediately to use that energy. But with this other system, it wouldn't matter. The energy would just go straight to the washing machine. Am I making sense? Yeah. And uh, I've got another tip. Be... Um, be clear, you're not buying the battery, you're not buying the inverter, you're not buying the panels, you are buying the power. So just having the stuff in the house and on the roof doesn't get you what you're buying. Don't pay the balance of the money until you stand in front of the meter or you get the data that shows you're getting the amount of power you were promised. That's the only time you know that it's been properly wired, isn't it? Now, if they don't want to do the deal, don't do the deal with them. If they are good tradespeople, 
if they'll be around next year, they will do the deal. In this area, many companies only last two or three years. I, did, I spoke about this for a council that had um, put in the sustainable offices, and the officers jumped up and they said, that happened to us. We kept on ringing them and saying, the system's not working. And they said, as only a council can say, if you don't come and look at it, we're not going to pay you. Of course, councils tend to pay for things in retrospect afterwards. When they did come to site, they had forgotten to hook it up to the mains electricity grid. Can you imagine that? For a council, you'd want to do a good job. So I'm, te I'm telling you from my experience and the experience of people I'm working with, be clear what you are buying. Hold back 5 or 10%. You say, look, and they say, we're, they always say, they would say that, wouldn't they? We're a really good company, we do a good job. They're not going to say anything else. Um, I don't want to sound grumpy up here. What, I'm what I think the council wants me to do is to talk about the truth and what's out there and how to get to where you want to go. I want you to be clear. I feel childish delight as I'm talking to you to know that the sun or whatever is in the sky over Sydney at the moment is giving me clean energy. There's nothing like, like my son will come um, for dinner and he leaves the lights on through the house. You know, <laughs> why would he listen to me? And it doesn't matter because it left the sun seven minutes ago and, you know, it's in my house. Or it left there yesterday and has been stored. It's a purifying thing that makes me feel here. It really gives me small little bursts of joy to have it. But there are some things you've got to do. So I've, just to sum up what I've said so far. Be clear what you want to do. Do you want to stay connected to the grid with batteries and have the gridders back up if you don't get enough? And for most of you, that will be your choice because at the, at the moment, it's in a sense the easiest way. You don't want a generator in your house in the middle of the Willembar. If you're on acreage, then it's, it's an option to have something that's um, not connected to the grid. But if you are going to disconnect from the poles and wires off your own acreage, look at that other option I've just described of getting something that will make full use of all the sun's energy and not waste it during the day. How am I doing so far? So, thank you. You can stay. What I'd like to do now is stop talking. I have this little sensor, like a sort of um, egg timer. As soon as I get tired of the sound of my own voice, I say, shut up, Michael. Shut up. So I'm going to ask you to ask me questions. Let's have a conversation. Does that work for you guys? Yeah. Yep. So the first question was back then. I'll come to you, sir. Yes? Uh, we've just had a quote for some uh, solar panels uh, with a 5 kilowatt system. Um, we were recommended at the, at the moment to stay on the grid. Um, and to look at getting batteries in about two years' time because of the cost. Yep. Um, and I'm just wondering, is that a feasible way to go about? Yes. So the question is, we've just had a quote and a recommendation to stay connected to the grid for a couple of years until it becomes cheaper to get, I guess, more battery storage. Heads up. Make sure that if you choose that part, sorry, Get down. Um, make sure that if you choose that path, the, ba the uh, inverter will work with the um, additional batteries and the additional panels if you get them. Well, we've, we've been assured that the wiring will be set up so that when the batteries become available and we choose to take them, yeah. we can just connect them up. Right. And, uh, right. And has the sorry to interrupt. And then the, uh, the batteries will charge. Yeah. And then any extra on top of uh, topping up the batteries will still get back. To the yeah. Yeah. A good a good option. But be clear and get it in writing that should you add more battery capacity and disconnect, the inverter will work without the grid. My software hadn't was not ready for market and would not allow the house to work 
without grid connection, although they sold it to me and I bought it on that basis. So just as this is new for Australia, it's new for the installers, except for those people who have been doing off-grid for 20 or 30 years. And I, I, I know the industry well, and I thought I'd got people who'd done that because they've done, done a lot of off-grid, but on further inquiries and talking with other people, um, I've got a clear understanding about what to do in that surplus power situation. Let me talk about cost. The key to getting a cheaper system, and for you going off earlier or now, is this. Reduce your base load. Your base load is the load that's there 24-7. There's some terrific energy monitors out there that will tell you what your house is using when you're asleep. Mine uses about 120 watts. Many of your houses will use 1,000 watts, whatever. Over 24 hours, you can use anything from 2 to 3 kilowatt hours. And a 2 or 3 kilowatt hours battery that will store the amount of energy at the moment is somewhere between 2,000 and $4,000 just to meet your base load. Once you get up and you start using appliances, you can go up to 20, 30 kilowatt hours. So in preparation for getting off grid, what I do and um, with the projects I, I did with myself and other people and what I suggest you do is be very clear and confident about the amount of energy you can get down to the minimum. In round figures, and I'm sure there are exceptions, there are about 14 off-grid systems on the market at the moment. In round figures, if you have a daily average use of about 4 to 5 kilowatts, you can go off-grid for around about 15 to $30,000. There's a big price range. If your daily average use is 10, 12, 20, 35, $40,000. So your average electricity use is the critical starting point for designing your system. And you have power over your base load. There's a machine in there that automatically turns off appliances you don't want. You may wish to leave the fridge on, but you may want to turn the modem off. It can chew up 120, 150 watts, which over 24 hours can be 3 or 4 kilowatts. Does that make sense to you? My sense of the price is that it's dropping much, much faster than solar panels. That instead of 15 years for the price to drop, I think we're looking at 6 to 12 months. And at this point, I want to repeat something I said this morning. If on this hand you have the Tesla battery and you saw that image, on this hand this other image was unnamed and not described by Mr. Tesla, which I regard as a serious failure to communicate. This other thing is the inverter. Mr. Tesla is just selling this. He's not selling the inverter. When my system failed because they were integrated, I went to one company and I wasn't shoved one to the other. So if Tesla is all over the place here and it's failing, you'll have to find whichever inverter company you're dealing with and be in the middle of these two people either denying responsibility or more or less helping you. I regard that as a major failing of the Tesla product. I regard it a major success of the Tesla product, the fact that it's putting downward pressure on battery prices, which is wonderful. That's a long answer to question. It's probably going to stop everybody else asking questions, but you did put your hand up, and I wonder if you still want to brave the way. Yes. Well, off you go. Um, you, uh, you were saying about the Santa Island. Uh, yep, yep. Can you tell me what is the cost of the inverter and the cost of the battery pack to go to it? Yeah, uh, the, there are a number of options. Um, I'm doing a job at the moment, getting them to quote, and they're coming in at 13,000.
but that's for that house which will have a daily average use of four to five, maybe six kilowatts a day. If the house had an energy use of 12, 15 kilowatts a day, it would be anything from 25 to 35. Is it possible just to go straight through the inverter from the solar without using the battery pack? That, yeah, that's what people are doing who are on the grid at the moment. There are 1.4 million houses using just the panels and the inverter. How effective is that? I mean, at, at night, you're not going to get any power, is that right? No, well, I, I, I did it for 20 years. When I disconnected... Um, not, when I put in my solar system in '96, I put in an inverter, and when there was more energy needed, say the microwave went on and other things went on at once, and the panels was a cloudy day or was at night, the inverter immediately brought the power in from the grid, and I had mains grid quality power all the time. Does that answer your question? I'm doing my best. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> Don't be nice to me. Let me clear it up for you. Well, the inverter range is in price depending on the capacity. So if it's uh, a, a solar system that's got, say, 2.2 or 5 kilowatt, in other words, it can make about 2,000 watts at any one moment for you, the inverter is going to be 1,500, something like that. So it that wouldn't cost much to, just to set up some solar panels and an inverter? That's why I'm here. Yeah. You should do this. <laughs> Yesterday. I had energy and water bills with teenage kids and with young kids, my boy was six, my daughter was ten, less than $300 a year. The energy company sent me bill, uh, checks. I paid no electricity for 20 years. Get on board. Sign up. Don't hang back. Yes, sir. Can I bother you with a few more questions? Of course, if you can bear the answer. <laughs> um, the other Unknowns in these uh, these quotes are the uh, the panels, the efficiency of the panels, yep. uh, the longevity of the panels, yep. um, the efficiency and the adequacy of the y earth yeah. design. Yeah. Uh, how, how do we check that? Oh, great. I spent, so I spent all afternoon trying <laughs> to check out these uh, panels and inverters to see yeah. whether they were what they said they were. And possibility yeah. right, you know. Yeah. Uh, How can you be sure? Okay, let me answer that. I found my mind wandering, as you said, you know, we don't know the efficiency, we don't know the longevity or the quality. And I thought, that's me. I don't know how long I'm going to last. I've got a very poor estimate of, estimate of my own efficiency. So I thought about that as you were asking me the question. And life from you and me and everything is uncertain. You can get a, a Rolls Royce and they'll promise this and um, you can go chasing them and expect to have the promises fulfilled. Choice surveys suggest that about 15% of um, solar installations amongst the 1.4 million which have been installed, uh, the customers are very unhappy. And th that's a lot of unhappy people. My answer is, get somebody who's been around for eight, ten years, whose business is likely to be there in eight or ten years, so he can call on warranties and so on. Secondly, hold back five or ten percent of the money until you stand in front of the thing. Um, that's about the only two things I can think of. Uh, one other thing is to make sure they use good panels. I paid a lot from, I put on some new panels and they are Australian made. They are unbelievably efficient. I have panels, I got rid of six 120 watt panels and I replaced them with six 327 watt panels. So I got three times the amount of power in a little more than the same space. And the lovely thing about them is they have these little box, boxes. So much competition, but I can get through this. <laughs> I, they have these little boxes, 
and they maximise the output of the panels. Are they micro -intelligent? Yeah, uh, yeah, or, or maximises. So when one is in shade, it tells the others to go on on without it. So I'm just going to wind up now because my time is coming to an end. I've, I, I want to say that you can get good panels from companies that have been in business for a while because it's in their financial interest to use proven products. The ones I used are really terrific. They're called Tigo, T-I-G-O, made by an Australian company. They make more than they say. They're rated at 327 watts, but they're making 360 and 380 watts, which is terrific. What now, T Tigo, T-I-G-O. So, um, should I wind up now, boss? This is my Blue Hill cattle dog. So, <laughs> there are a couple of things you can do is to follow up. There's my website sustainablehouse.com.au. I've just done a huge blog on a week of data of my house and some other things. There are my two books, Sustainable House and Sustainable Food, um, been through 14, 15 reprints, being sold by a local bookseller out there. Costs, designs, mistakes, tragedies, tips, dealing with builders, trades, architects, councils and so on. And all I can say is what I said to this gentleman and everybody. Once you do this, in a sense the cost falls away and there's this little bubble of joy at just using what falls for free on your roof. So yes, there are these problems, but dip your toe in and have a go, I urge you. It will give you more value inside when the sun shines and when the water falls on your roof than anything else you can buy, I'm sure. So thank you very much. I'd just like to thank Michael. Michael, you have been a bubble of joy. Michael's been speaking quite widely uh, to our building industry, to our council offices, and now to our community. So um, thank you very much, Michael, for all that you've given us over the last couple of days. Um, and that, folks, concludes our workshop sessions for this year's Sustainability Home Expo. So thank you very much for your participation. Uh, we really encourage your feedback, so if you'd care to um, share with us what's inspired you today, what we can do better next time. Um, we'd love to hear from you and we hope to see you again next year. Thank you.